So going back to the video, I said I was going to talk a little bit about drivers. So I'm going to use this lockdown period to talk a little bit about sort of fittings, what I look for when it comes to fittings. Uh, I'm going to do some stuff out in the garden. I have ordered a net for the garden. I'm going to go up to Ashbury and use their facilities at points as well. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about drivers because I think sometimes when you're watching videos and some of these pros, they can baffle you with... Like you need a physics degree to understand what they're saying with centre of gravity, centre of mass, which is the same thing, moment of inertia. But what does it actually mean to sort of me and you? So what I'm going to do is kind of give a little bit of an idiot's guide as best I can about what all that means and what it means for the driver and what it means what I'm looking for when it comes to fittings with regards to centre of gravity, forgiveness of driver, what does forgiveness of driver actually mean? So let's start with moment of inertia and what it actually means because we hear people saying oh it's got high MOI, low MOI. Moment of inertia is effectively the club's resistance to twisting and it's measured in what's called as grams per centimetre squared but that's just complete baffling physics. There is a limit to how much like grams per centimetre squared a golf club can have or how much MOI it can have. And what it is is effectively is a golf club when you hit a golf ball with it if you hit it square in the center that golf club will not twist that's if the center of gravity is in the center so it can get a little bit confusing so let's say the center of gravity or the center of mass of a driver which is basically a point within the driver where all the other where the the space around it is evenly distributed or the weight is evenly distributed around that center point and it can be a moment a center a point in space it's not a actual point it doesn't have to be an actual physical point on the driver sorry i'm getting a little bit technical so let's say the center of gravity is directly in the front of this face here if you hit the ball in the face there behind directly in line like in line with the center of gravity then you will get maximum ball speed from that strike because that is where most of that is where all the efficiency is coming from. So when you see people like me and other pros talking about the efficiency of a strike, like at 1.4, 1.5 or anything, the higher that is, that means that their strike is as close to the centre of gravity as possible. So you can have 120 mile an hour swing speed, but hit it right out here, and your ball speed is dropped right down because there's no efficiency. The centre of gravity is here, but you've struck it out here. So when it comes to efficiency of a driver, the, the closer you can strike that ball to the center of gravity of that driver, the more efficiency you're gonna have. Now the moment of inertia is the club's resistance to twisting. So if we, so if we look like a driver here and I hit a ball there, the club is gonna twist. And if I hit a ball there, the club will twist toe in that way. And that's why when you hit out of the toe and you hit out of the heel, you get what's called gear effect. Now what gear effect is, is exactly like it sounds. So say my hand here is the driver, the ball comes in and connects to the driver like this. If you're off center or off the center of gravity and it twists, this twist this way makes the ball twist that way because the gearing is making that happen. And that's what gear effect is. So gear effect is if you hit it here, the, ball, the club is twisted that way, which makes the ball spin that way, which then promotes the draw spin. So the moment of inertia is this club's resistance to twisting. And mo mainly that's done with what's called perimeter weighting. So a lot of the weight had come around the crown, and you'll see a lot in this in the drivers in 2021, looking at what they're promoting, is they've gone with perimeter weighting, and that is there to try and stop the club twisting at impact. If your center of gravity of your driver, and this is where low spin drivers come into it, is right at the front here. So as you, if you've got the center of gravity there, as you hit the ball, the, the club will twist a lot more because all the weight is at the front. If you have the weight and the center of gravity all the way at the back, so using that perimeter weight in, having the center, the weight at the back, which is why a lot of these forgiving drivers have the weight low and at the back, then the twisting isn't as predominant because the sort of pivot point of the center of gravity is lower. Whereas if it's right at the top here, then the, it spins more, which is why clubs like this Maverick Sub-Zero, if you put the weight right at the front, you're bringing all the, the center of gravity to the front. So what that does, is if you hit it off the center of gravity, 
that's where you will see, like for me, if I hit it out the toe, I get snap pox because there's less loft, there's a massive gear effect because the club has twisted and it's just giving me a complete snap hook. So when I'm fitting drivers, what I'm looking to do is initially see a strike pattern. Good players will normally have a predominant strike pattern, whether that's high toe, center, low heel, wherever it is, you're looking for that strike pattern. And what some drivers do, Titleist TSI 3 for example, they've got movable weights at the back. And what that helps do is helps a fitter be able to move the center of gravity around the club. So in essence, if someone's hitting it out of the toe and I move the weight into the toe, i.e. moving the center of gravity across the face, when they hit the ball out the toe, if it's directly in line with the center of gravity, they're going to maximize their ball speed. Same in the heel, same in the center, and all these little tracks that you get, the M5 for example, are there to sort of move around the center of gravity to maximize that player's launch, spin, and distance. Now if you're someone like me who can scattergun the, the face and you've got no predominant strike pattern because of like swing floors and things like that, then you need a driver that's forgiving, i.e. it's got more moment of inertia. And what that means is it's got weight low, it's got perimeter weight in, and the center of gravity is as far back as possible. So when I hit out the toe, or out the heel, or low, or high, or all that kind of thing, the club's resistance to twisting will be less, which will mean if I hit the toe, I'm going to get less gear effect, i.e. because the club hasn't sort of twisted as much, I'll get less gear, in, less gear effect, and it will keep the ball straight or online. So clubs like Ping, who have always been known as being stable clubs, when they say they're stable clubs, what they're saying is their resistance to twisting is higher than, say, this Maverick Sub-Zero with the weight pushed up, which will twist all over the place. If I hit out the, the toe, hit out the heel, I will get snack hooks and big fades and slices and things like that. So this driver is for people who are probably not like me. This is for people who can strike the ball well, can have a, a really consistent strike pattern. So when I'm fitting, I look for that strike pattern and that helps me then decide what type of driver they, that you would go into or what one you can benefit or how I can move weights around certain clubs to be able to aid that launch, aid that strike pattern. If you're a scattergunner all over the face, then what I'll do is I'll look at the forgiving clubs. What that does is the forgiving clubs will give you more spin and better launch because the weight's low and at the back. Downside to that is you will lose distance, but because you've got more backspin on the ball, the actual side spin axis or the side spin axis will reduce slightly, which is why people find it difficult to sort of fade and draw wedges as opposed to it being really easy with a driver because the less loft and the less spin you have, the more you can maneuver the golf ball, which is a little bit goes into irons, which we'll talk about another time. Also, you know, with, when it comes to strike pattern, we can sort of make adjustments using hosels, different kick points in shafts, all that type of thing is what we're, I'm looking at when I'm doing a fitting for a driver to try and maximize your, the way you deliver the golf club. And the other thing is obviously these clubs have what's called roll and bulge. So, Although this is a nine degree driver, it's a nine degree driver at a point. But if I go below that point, then there's less loft. If I go above that point, then there's more loft. So if I'm launching it high all the time, and I've got my strike high on the face, then I'm giving the club more loft. So, I, so when, you're, when I'm fitting, I'm also looking at the strike point to be able to determine what kind of loft and launch conditions that you can have in order to maximize the ball speed maximize the launch and maximize your distance but at the same time giving you that forgiveness for your ability i hope i've explained that as simply as i can in order for you to understand exactly what when we as fitters say you need a forgiving driver why we're saying it it's because of the, the way you're delivering the club because of the strike patterns that you have you know i need a forgiving driver i use that because when we do like the 59s and things on Dan's channel, I, if I get two or three bombs out there, then I've done my part. I don't need to be finding fairways. I don't need to be 270 yards down the fairway because that's what Dan and Les were there for. I've got the speed. I'm there to hit that 300 yard bomb that will come out two or three times around. 
My problem is I still try and use that when I play normal golf. And I need to get away from that. I need to put that golf club away. I need to have a second driver, a forgiving driver that I can go out and play golf with. Whereas that is low spin, low high low. I want it launching high, spinning low, and I just want it as far as possible. What that means is because of my inconsistencies in strike on the toe and the heel, because all that weight is at the front, because the center of gravity is pretty much at the, in center, if I go off of center, I'm twisting the club face, the MOI is low and I'm snap hooking or high slicing the ball. And that's why that driver is for good players and that's what it means. So that's what I wanna do over this period is try and educate people from an amateur point of view for amateurs, not try and baffle you with science, not try and baffle you with like talking how pros talk pro to pro sometimes. Try and explain it to you in a layman's terms or in an idiot's guide so you will know when you go and get fitted what the fitter is trying to explain to you. That certain aspects and certain things that you're doing are resulting in why your ball is going all over the place and how technology can help you straighten that ball flight up by getting a forgiving driver, by allowing that spin, by putting the ego to one side and letting the distance come back. I know I'm guilty of it. Um, will help you get more fairways and just get the ball in play. And that's the aim of what I want to do is educate people a little bit more from my point of view. So anyway, if you like videos like that and you want to see more daily vlogs, more stuff from me at Ashbury, um, how I'm sort of progressing with my handicap and things like that, then please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel and follow me on my journey down to scratch and more about fittings and things as I get down to Ashbury. But otherwise, I'm going to leave this vlog there and I'll speak to you all soon.